after I shot the next video, which I shot prior to this video, does that make sense? Maybe. Um, I realized there's a lot of concepts I rushed through in what became close to a 20 minute video. And I thought maybe I'd put together this prerequisite to talk about uh, memory and super basic um, in succinct fashion with some call outs and also the math behind um, character fonts on the Phoenix system. And this will also serve as a, the prerequisite I made reference to, which discusses the MMU uh, control byte, which uh, is located at zero one or location memory location one. So to start with, I'd like to uh, invite you to watch part four of the super basic intro, which covers the way that super basic um, manages memory. Um, but what, I'll, what I have here displayed are um, eight segments of 8K each, or eight banks of 8K each, um, starting at zero page to the right here and building up upward and then to the left. So each vertical stack here is 8K. Um, and th these are all hexadecimal addresses. I just didn't bother to put the, uh, the dollar sign in because of space. Um, but in, in essence, you've got a number of, depending on the environment, meaning if you boot to a microkernel, if you boot as a machine is booted here with microkernel and super basic running, or if you have an F256 uh, junior, as I do here, and I happen to throw the toggle switch and boot it into no kernel mode, into RAM mode, um, or if you've done something interesting with the way your memory management banks are loaded, um, you'll end up with a memory map with something or nothing across most of this range. But it, in location C1000, something magical happens. And what happens is there's a stack of uh, 4K, um, sorry, 8K addresses, which do special things in the Phoenix. And of course, underneath it all uh, is a bank of memory, just like the rest of the memory, um, which can be used. In fact, it is used. Uh, this is where um, the microkernel uh, keeps a good part of its code. And of course, it uses other, other banks as well. But it always uses the C1000 range of code. Um, this is controlled by the MMU IOCTRL um, register, um, which, is, which is a byte. And in fact, these are just two bits of the register. And how, the way it's used is, if you place a zero in there, or have the lower order bits, uh, bit zero and bit one as zeros, um, you're essentially sitting at what is normally the, the default, which is a whole series of low level registers that when you poke an address in the C1000 or D1000 range, you'll end up affecting things like double wide, double high characters, or a graphics mode, or a whole series of, of things. You're dealing with all, most of the devices on the Phoenix are, are accessible through this kind of zero um, range. What we're gonna be talking about in the next video, and we'll start here, is the font memory, in which case you'll need to store a one in this location. So by poking a one, otherwise known as poke one comma one, you're, you're in essence telling the machine that you'd like to be able to uh, alter font memory um, anytime you poke data into the C1000 range. Likewise, if I want to write to screen memory, which you're looking at screen memory here, that's a uh, value two. And if I'd like to worry about the background color um, or the colors, sorry, the foreground and background color, that's uh, display color memory, which is a setting of three. So that's uh, some notes about the memory map. I also want to mention that in part four of the super basic intro of the series, um, we talk about the fact that, and I, I make reference to it, by the way, in the next video, but we talk about the fact that um, that super basic uses hexadecimal 1000 to 1FFF to store identifiers, which otherwise known as variables. And this is a table that it builds dynamically as you say, uh, let a equal six, for instance, variable letter a. Um, uh, so I, I'm mentioning this because the memory location of 1000, which is the bottom of the range, is 4096 in decimal. And you'll notice when I allocate memory to hold the uh, font data temporarily before I copy it from the place I loaded it into with B load up to font memory, you'll notice that Super Basic gives me an address of 4097 when I ask it for 3K of memory. So I'm literally gonna say, I'll do it here, just so you, you know, have the context. I'll say 
think I could type on this line. Let me see, my eyes are a little bit off there, right here. I'll say um, print alloc, my value is going off the screen there. Print alloc of, um, say, I don't know, 2048 bytes, okay? And it'll return back to me, clean that up a little bit. Eh, is this gonna work? It's gonna give me a syntax error, but let me type a colon here in a rem. This might work. So crazy it might work. It doesn't work. All right, I have to type, I have to type new up here. Hold on, new. Okay, let's try this now. Yeah, you go. Okay, so um, uh, it, it, I asked for 2K and it handed me back an address of 4097, which is kind of the default before you have any memories defined of where um, your, your, you know, your, you can store your own memory or binary image or something. Um, so I'm mentioning that because um, I, I was struggling to, to remember or recall the area of where Super Basic typically allocates this space from. I called it a heap, but it's, it, it's a space where it normally stores identifiers. So what does that do? Well, it leaves you less memory for identifiers. If you tell it you want 3K, um, it's only gonna have what, I guess, uh, from, from one to one FFF is 4K. So it's only leaving 1K left for, for memory variables. Um, the good news is that once we move the fonts up into the C1000 range, we no longer need that space. Um, and you'll need to type a new NEW to kind of clear it over that super basic reset its pointers. So that's the first thing I wanted to cover here. Also, just a fun footnote, 3,372 bytes is the maximum that super basic will allow you to allocate using the alloc command before it says you're out of memory, okay? So that's that bit. Let me see something. Yeah, this is a magic line. I can, I can clear this line. Keep it nice and clean with the control K, the new keystroke I just learned. Okay, um, so that that's memory. Um, let's just move on quickly to maths, maths, and infos. Those are two um, common uh, um, words used in, I think, uh, the British version of English, otherwise known as the English version of English, if you're from the UK. Um, and also, I think that um, there's a presidential candidate uh, that, that had, wore a pin that said math. So he loved math. Um, so let's talk about the character set. 256 characters in the character set. We talk about that in the next video. There are eight bytes per each character and they're defined as follows. By the way, that equals 2048. So for a complete character set of 256 characters, uh, you know, defined as an eight by eight matrix, which is what we use here on this platform, you need 2K of memory. And the way that we display it or talk about it, I'll put my, my handy uh, chart here. Of course, I could just add it to the video, but nah, I'll just do it here. We've got eight rows of 32 characters. That's the way we org that's the way it's organized. And that's the way we will be t talking about dealing with it kind of piece by piece. Um, eight. Okay, good enough. Um, and then the range of ASCII, or even on the Phoenix platform, runs from zero to 31, which are typically non-printed. Those are control codes, except when there's graphic characters there. We'll talk about that in the next video. 32, ASCII 32 to 63, uh, contains kind of special symbols like the space character, the, the symbols on top of the the, uh, the numbers, etc., cetera, um, and numbers themselves, uh, some other characters. 64 to 95 are the alpha, uppercase. Uh, 96 to 128 are the lowercase with a couple of special symbols at the end of each of those two sets. And this is something that drives some people crazy because the Commodore had this flipped, depending upon what mode you were in. I'm not gonna talk about that here. Um, finally, each character is defined as an eight by eight matrix, as I mentioned prior, and it looks a bit like this. Here's the letter A with eight bits, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and eight bits high. Okay, each one of these dots represents a zero byte, a zero bit, sorry. These are, this represents a one bit. So um, they also, interesting uh, kind of footnote to this, is they always leave the bottom of the character set blank for a number or a letter, they'll of course use that when they use graphic characters such that the characters will connect um, for making straight lines and whatnot. Also, the right side of the character, again, for, for alpha and for numerics and for special symbols, is also blank. And that's so you have a space between characters to the extent where if I type AA, you see a nice space between the two of those. Um, so that's about all I wanted to cover here. I went through quite a bit but keep this in mind. I'll probably take a screenshot of this and flash it on the screen during the next video. Um, hopefully this intro 
uh, gives you some information that is useful that you may not have known. Uh, important things to keep in mind because in the next video, I go real fast, real quick and um, make a bunch of mistakes. I'm kind of all over the place, um, but I felt it, it a good thing to do to come back and kind of start fresh and lay the stuff out on a, on a screen for a, a quick discussion.